establish the game facade. Become a calculator that is dumb. Salam to come a car, Mr. Sir Sangita. Give a tap at the sound of Samaya. More of all the cars. Sangatam Sakuta Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanam Jedi Hantuya Bhajani We don't know what he is to do in Satam In the Bhagavad Gita, oh, chapter seven, verse number one. <coughs> okay, we finished. Are oh, you just starting? Yeah, we we just like some sweet and then we can say some things. To hear hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear about him directly from the Bhagavad Gita, huh? Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Right. So you read the Sanskrit? You said the Sanskrit? Yeah. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord by development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus material loss and avarice become uh, are diminished. But when these impurities are wiped away, so all these impurities are wiped away. the candidate remains steady in his position of pure of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Thus, Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection 
and it enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagam. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text 35 and 36. Mangalaya Chalokanam, Shimaya Cha Bhavaya Cha. Asteyadu Kulambodav Adyonanta Sakapumam Yad Bahu Danda Guptayam Swapurnyam Yadavo Richita Kridanti Paramanandam Maha Purushika Iva. Translation The original personality Godhead, the enjoyer, and Balarama, the primeval Lord Ananta, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty being protected by the arms of the Lord are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. As we have discussed many times, the personality of Godhead Vishnu resides within each and every universe in two capacities, namely as the Garbhadakshaya Vishnu and the Shirodakshaya Vishnu. The Shira Dakshai Vishnu has his own planet, or the northern top of the universe, and there is a great ocean of milk where the Lord resides on the bed of Ananta, incarnation of Baladeva. This, thus, Maha, Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the Yadu dynasty to the ocean of milk and Shri Balarama to the Ananta, where Lord Krishna resides. So you notice it doesn't say that the uh, Mahavishnu or Karana Daksha Vishnu is in the material world because he's situated in a causal ocean, <coughs> the Karana Sagar. Whereas Garba Daksha Vishnu and Shira Daksha Vishnu are present inside the material world, although they are both transcendental. He has compared the citizens of Dwarka to the liberated inhabitants of the Vaikuntha locus. Beyond the material sky, further than we can see with our eyes, and beyond the sevenfold coverings of the universe. Why does it say seven and not eight? Because the false ego is not something real. But there is earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, and intelligence. But there's no false ego because it's, it's not a real thing. That's my understanding. Uh, if there's another uh, more correct understanding, you can tell me. <coughs> beyond the material sky, further than we can see with our eyes, and beyond the sevenfold coverings of the universe, there is the causal ocean in which all the universes are floating like footballs. Beyond the causal ocean, there is the unlimited span of the spiritual sky, generally known as the effulgence of Brahman. So when it says floating like footballs, then it's not spherical, it's oblong. But that's interesting. You would have to be, uh, have to do more research on that. Huh? Huh? What about British English? Uh-huh. So football would be round. Is that what you're saying? Okay, that's why I said more research should be done on that. <laughs> Within this effulgence, there are innumerable spiritual planets, and they are known as the Vaikuntha planets. Each and every Vaikuntha planet is many, many times bigger than the biggest universe within the material world. 
and in each of them there are innumerable inhabitants who look exactly like Lord Vishnu. These inhabitants are known as the Maha Purushikas, or persons directly engaged in the service of the Lord. They are happy in those planets and are without any kind of misery, and they live perpetually in full youthfulness, enjoying life in full bliss and knowledge without fear of death, uh, birth, death, old age, or disease, and without the influence of Kala, eternal time. Maharaj Yudhisthira has compared the inhabitants of Dwarka to the Mahapurushikas of the Vaikuntha Loka because they are so happy with the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, there are many references to the Vaikuntha Lokas that are mentioned there as Madhama, Dhamma, or the kingdom of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this, yeah. Huh? Did we read the previous? I, I have it. Uh, oh, no. Okay. I've read it myself before, but uh, that's why I had it marked. Um, you're right. I just read 35 and 36, but actually we did not read 34. That's correct. Uh, although I, I've read it previously, and that's why I had it penciled. So, Okay. We'll, go, we'll read 34. Bhagavan api govindo Pramanyo bhakta vatsala Kachit pure sudharmayam Sukam aste suhid rita Translation. Is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality God, it, who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses and the brahmanas, who is very affectionate toward his devotees, enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarka Puri, surrounded by friends. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Here in this particular verse, the Lord is described as Bhagavan, Govinda, Brahmanya, and Bhaktivatsala. He is Bhagavan Swayam, or the original Supreme Personality of Godhead full with all opulences, all power, all knowledge, all beauty, all fame, and all renunciation. No one is equal to or greater than him. He is Govinda because he is the pleasure of the cows and the senses. Those who have purified their senses by devotional service to the Lord can render unto him real service and thereby draw, derive transcendental pleasure out of such purified senses. So when Prabhupada says real service, that means it implies there's service that is not real or let's say not complete. So that would be service with material desires, whereas real service is service without any material desire, but with only desire to please Krishna. Only the impure conditioned living being cannot derive any pleasure from the senses. But being illusioned by false pleasures of the senses, he becomes servant of the senses. So basically, the Prabhupada is, is uh, comparing real pleasure to false pleasure, the real pleasure of the senses to false pleasure of the senses. That's why we said that the pleasure that we experience in the material world is not real, is not actual pleasure. It's the temporary relief from misery. That's what's called pleasure here. Whereas real pleasure, there's no misery involved. There's no birth, death, old age, and disease, or fear of those things, because one understands that the soul is eternal and engages in the internal activity of the soul, which is pure devotional service to the Lord. So whether pure devotional service is rendered in the material world or the spiritual world, it's the same thing. But mixed devotional service will not give the same result. And what is the result? You're free from anxiety and fear, not suchti, not kangsati, and free from material hankerings. The Lord, uh, therefore, we need his protection for our own interests. 
uh, the Lord is the protector of cows and a Brahminical culture, a society devoid of cow protection and Brahminical cultures under the direct, uh, is not under the direct protection of the Lord, just as the prisoners in the jails are not under the protection of the king, but under the protection of a severe agent of the king. Now, this is a very important point. We're living right now in a society that does not protect cows and in general does not respect Brahminical culture. How could it respect Brahminical culture if it kills cows? And how can it respect Brahminical culture if it doesn't listen to genuine Brahmanas and who will definitely uh, instruct people that you know there are four sinful activities pillars of sinful activities in the material world that should be avoided and there are four things that one should do every day that are f positive for spiritual life. <coughs> Without cow protection and cultivation of Brahminical qualities in human society, at least for a section of the members of society, no human civilization can prosper at any length. That's why there should, there should be the four orders Brahmana, Chacha, Vaisha, Sudra. If you just have, like, uh, for example, in the, in the bees, they only have uh, a, a uh, Chatriya, that's the king bee, and then Sudras, the, uh, the workers, that's it. So some societies, there's only three orders. Some societies, there's only two orders. And most societies only one order or no order, right? So you see, there has to be the four orders uh, and the four ashramas also. A society devoid of cow protection and Brahminical culture is not under the direct protection of the Lord. Uh, that's, that's the point. So if you become a devotee, then you'll come under the direct protection of the Lord. Mahatmana Mamparta Daivim Prakritim Asritaha. It's Daivim Prakritim Asritaha. They take shelter of this uh, transcendental uh, mercy of the Lord. Let's see that verse 9 chapter <coughs> where it says, does it, is it the 9th chapter or is it 8th chapter? Yeah, ninth chapter 13th verse. O son of Prefa, those who are not deluded, deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. What is that? Daivim Prakritim. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and in inexhaustible. And the, and the purport Prabhupada says, in this verse, the description of the Mahatma is clearly given. The first sign of the Mahatma is that he is already situated in the divine nature. He is not under the control of material nature. And how is this effected, or how, is this, how does this happen? That is explained in the seventh chapter. One who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, at once becomes freed from the control of material nature. That is the qualification. One can become free from the... Well, now, okay, let's talk about this because someone might say, well, I know devotees who are affected by the material nature and they surrendered. Yeah, but it, here is a difference. It says, that is explained in the seventh chapter. One who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality God as Sri Krishna at once becomes freed from the control of material nature. That is the qualification. Okay, so surrender means sarvadharma pritya ja maam he kam saranam ja ham tvam sarvapapi pyamaksi syami master ja. So the real description of surrender is manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mam ivaisasi satyam te pratijane priyosime. Always think of me. So right there is the difference. Always think of me. So if a person is uh, surrendered but is not always thinking of Krishna they're not completely surrendered 
always thinking of Krishna, of me, he says, and uh, worshipping me, manmana uh, bhava madba, or becoming my devotee, madba, to madhyaji, worshipping me, mad, uh, and namaskaru, always offering their humble obeisances and homage uh, to me. So, this always thinking of me is the criterion of someone who's completely surrendered. This is explained in the seventh chapter. One who surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna at once becomes freed from the control of material nature. That is the qualification. One can become free from the control of material nature as soon as he surrenders his soul to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the preliminary formula. Notice the word preliminary. Being marginal potency, as soon as the living entity is freed from the control of material nature, he is put under the guidance of the spiritual nature. The guidance of the spiritual nature is called daivi prakriti, divine nature. So when one is promoted in that way by surrendering to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one attains to the stage of great soul Mahatma. The Mahatma does not divert his attention to anything outside Krishna. See again, manmana bhava. He doesn't divert his attention to anything outside of Krishna because he knows perfectly well that Krishna is the original supreme person, the cause of all causes. There is no doubt about it. Such a Mahatma or great soul develops through association with other Mahatmas, pure devotees. Pure devotees are not even attacked, attracted by Krishna's other features, such as the forearm Mahavishnu. They are simply attracted by the two-arm form of Krishna. They are not attracted to other features of Krishna, nor are they concerned with any form of a demigod or of a human being. They meditate only upon Krishna in Krishna consciousness. They are always engaged in the unswerving service of the Lord in Krishna consciousness. Now this is also uh, repeated again by Srila Prabhupada in the 18th chapter, 66, 65th verse where Prabhupada says, 66 verse, where he says, one should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he is all attractive. One who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attract, attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super soul feature, etc., but one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one who is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself, is the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge, and this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> so, and then in the, in the previous verse, and it says... These words stress that one should concentrate his mind upon Krishna, the very form with two hands carrying a flute, the bluish boy with a beautiful face and peacock feathers in his hair. There are descriptions of Krishna found in the Brahma Samhita and other literatures. One should fix his mind on this original form of Godhead, Krishna. One should not even divert his attention to other forms of the Lord. The Lord has multi forms as Vishnu, Narayana, Rama, Varaha, etc. But a devotee should concentrate his mind on the form that was present before Arjuna. Concentration of the mind on the form of Krishna constitutes the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is disclosed to Arjuna because Arjuna is the most dear friend of Krishna. So here we see in three different places Prabhupada says the same thing because Krishna is saying it. But he's giving it, giving specific emphasis to it. So here it says, the Mahatma does not divert his attention to anything outside of Krishna, and anything outside Krishna, because he knows perfectly well that Krishna is the original supreme person, the cause of all causes. There's no doubt about it. Such a Mahatma or great soul develops through association with other Mahatmas, pure devotees. Pure devotees are not even attracted by Krishna's other features, such as the forearm Mahavishnu. They are simply attracted by the two-armed form of Krishna, they are not attracted to other features of Krishna, 
nor are they concerned with any form of a demigod or a human being. They meditate only upon Krishna and Krishna consciousness. They are always engaged in the unswerving service of the Lord in Krishna consciousness. So this is what it means to be completely surrendered to the Lord. <coughs> so then it says, without cow protection and cultivation of Brahminical qualities in human society, at least for a section of the members of society, no human civilization can prosper at any length. By Brahminical culture, the development of the dormant qualities of goodness, namely truthfulness, equanimity, sense control, forbearance, simplicity, general knowledge and transcendental knowledge and firm faith in the Vedic wisdom, one can become a Brahmana and thus see the Lord as he is. And after surpassing the Brahmanical, Brahminical perfection, one has to become a devotee of the Lord so that his loving affection in the form of, a devo uh, in the form of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover can be transcendentally achieved. Let's read that one more time. And after surpassing the Brahminical perfection, one has to become a devotee of the Lord so that his loving affection in the form of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover can be transcendentally achieved. The stage of a devotee which attracts the transcendental affection of the Lord does not develop unless one has developed the qualities of a Brahmana as above mentioned. The Lord is inclined to a Brahmana of quality and not of false prestige. Wow. Thus, those who are less than a Brahmana by qualification cannot establish any relation with the Lord, just as fire cannot be kindled from the raw earth unless there is wood, although there is a relation between wood and the earth. Since the Lord is all perfect in himself, there could not be any question of, of his welfare and Maharaj used to refrain from asking this question. He simply inquired about his residential place, Dwarkapuri, where pious men assemble. The Lord sits, stays only where pious men assemble and takes pleasure in their glorifying the supreme truth. Maharaj Yudhisthira was anxious to know about the pious men and their pious acts in the city of Dwarka. So this again is a very profound purport all the purports are profound by Srila Prabhupada. But there are many points here that are fine, I would say, uh, fine uh, or refined points, uh, subtle points that one will, will miss uh, unless they carefully read Bhagavatam. One will miss, uh, because the same points are made in Bhagavad Gita, but they're more clear, no, let's say not clearly, but more elaborately explained and with very fine, uh, let's say, uh, examples in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so the main point is that without cow protection and cultivation of Brahminical qualities in the human society, it goes together. Cow protection and cultivation of Brahminical uh, and, and, and Brahminical culture. Uh, so without that, uh, uh, a society that doesn't have that is not under the direct protection of the Lord. So that's our situation today. That's why you're seeing uh, social unrest. You're seeing economic distress. You're seeing Natural catastrophes, just like this huge hurricane in, right now in Florida and, and the East Coast. Uh, these things are happening. Why? Because America is not under the direct protection of the Lord. Because there's no cow protection and there's no cultivation of Brahminical qualities in human society, at least, at least for a section of the members of society. So this is what Prabhupada is trying to establish at least a section of the American society should be engaged in Brahminical culture to garner the protection of Krishna. <coughs> but then it says, 
after surpassing the Brahminical perfection, one has to become a devotee of the Lord so that his loving affection in the form of proprietor, so Nanda, uh, Nanda Maharaj was a proprietor. He owned 900, was it 900,000 or 900 million cows? I think it's 900,000 cows. So <laughs> he's a big proprietor, he's a massive proprietor. Nobody has 900,000 cows uh, today. Uh, so he's a proprietor, but his proprietorship does not de develop into a false ego. He's a proprietor with the loving affection of Krishna. He's above the Brahminical perfection. He has a loving uh, affection as a proprietor, as a master. Usually proprietors and masters are puffed up. And friend, yes, yeah, sometimes a friend of Krishna, or someone who considers themselves a friend of Krishna can get puffed up. But because of their loving affection, even in the form of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover, can be transcendentally achieved. So one can become the proprietor, the master, the friend, the son, and lover of Krishna. Yeah. Huh? Uh, let's see. Let's look at it more carefully. Become a devotee Lord so that his loving affection in the form of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover can be transcendentally achieved. Okay. Yes. And his loving affection in the form of proprietor, master, friend, son, and lover can be transcendental. Okay, I agree with that. The stage of a devotee which attracts the transcendental affection of the Lord does not develop unless one has developed the qualities of a brahmana as above mentioned. The Lord is inclined to a brahmana of quality and not of false prestige. That's another major point. We unfortunately have brahmanas that are full of false prestige rather than the quality of a brahmana in this world today. Those who are less than a brahmana by qualification cannot establish any relation with the Lord, just as fire cannot be kindled from the raw earth unless there is wood, although there is a relation between wood and the earth. That's another very subtle, wonderful example. Since the Lord is all perfect in himself, there could not be any question of his welfare and Maharaj Yudhisthira refrained from asking this question. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, I don't know if O-class going like that on the, the speaking of Gopal Shampoo. Mm-hmm. 